Hello! I recently acquired some Stuart Simple Black 4.0, the blackest paint in the universe. It has a bunch of unpronounceable ingredients in it, and a big number 4 on the bottle. But is it really the blackest paint ever? Well, today I'm going to do some highly unscientific tests to see if we can find out. I've been curious to try some of this paint for ages, so let's get into it, shall we? So my first test is going to be painting on two identical canvases, one with this Montmartre acrylic paint in lamp black. It's probably one of the blackest paints I have in my collection, and I've written it on the back so I don't get them mixed up. And the other canvas we're going to test out with the black 4.0. As I said in my introduction, these are definitely not scientific tests. I don't have equipment to measure light or dark, but we're just going off visual cues here. What does it look like on the camera? Here's a brush stroke of the Montmartre lamp black paint. It looks pretty black here. I mean, you can see it's shining because it's still very wet, so it's hard to tell at the moment how black it's going to be. But I do like this paint. I use it quite a lot. It's very inexpensive at about $2.50 a tube, Australian dollars. But it's nice and smooth, and I really like using it. And now to paint out a stripe of the black 4.0, just to see if there's any difference immediately. And the one time I took the cap off to see if there was a little thing on the inside, and there isn't. <laughs> so we'll just flip it open and squirt a bit out onto a clean paintbrush. Because I only have a small bottle, I didn't want to put it onto a palette first. I'm just putting it directly onto the canvas. I'm very glad I did this, as we'll see a bit later. But here I am painting it out, just like I did with the Montmartre paint. This one didn't seem to spread as easily. As you can see, I'm struggling to paint it out here, but I got there eventually. And because the paint is wet, it is reflecting off the studio lights quite a lot. Otherwise, it looks pretty black, but I'm not seeing a huge difference between the two panels yet. And I've already made a bit of a mess, you can see up the top there, uh, by the end I was covered in paint. But just looking at them side by side, they look pretty similar. So in order to get a much better idea, I'm going to paint the entire canvas. I'll start with Montmartre Lamp Black. And I was pretty much just applying it directly from the tube onto the canvas, because all I want to do is cover it here as completely as possible. I like this particular paint because it's very opaque, and it has a soft buttery consistency, making it pretty easy to spread out on a canvas. Because of its low price, I'm happy to use it generously. And overall, it's a decent quality black acrylic paint. I don't really have any issues with it. Though one thing that hadn't occurred to me is just how shiny is it going to be once it's dry? Because some acrylic paints dry quite matte, and other ones have a sheen to them. And I wasn't really remembering what this paint is like. And we're certainly going to find that out in a while once it's fully dry. But I'll just get the rest of this canvas covered, and then we'll move on to testing out the black 4.0. I really should have done it the other way around, because that 4.0 paint is drying really quickly. So of course, when I started adding more paint to it, I realized that my original paint streak has got a bit of a ridge there and it had already kind of dried. It's not as nice and smooth as I would have liked. But I have to tell you that this paint, as soon as it hit the canvas, it felt like it was drying almost immediately. And it was such a pain to spread. I was really struggling with it. I've sped this up a little bit, but this took me ages to cover the canvas, probably twice as long as it did with the other paint. This is also in a bottle and not a tube, so squeezing the paint out was more difficult. It also has a different consistency, and maybe here you could see how it's kind of forming a skin on top of the canvas. It was such a weird thing, I've never seen paint do this before. It's almost like painting with tar or something, it sort of goes quite sticky and hard to move. It was reminding me of skin that forms on the top of custard. But yeah, it's just a very strange paint, quite plasticky and not like any other acrylic paint I've ever tried. I'll also mention at the time of recording it is summer in Melbourne. It has been very warm and also incredibly humid, so that may have some effect on the paint. And if you're interested in getting some of this paint for yourself, it is available from the company Culture Hustle, which is in the UK, and I'll post their website down in the description so you can check it out. They have some other interesting art supplies on there, which I'm going to review as well, but the Black 4.0, I think, was the one I was most curious about. 
I'll see if I can find a link to the whole saga about Vanta Black, which is the reason why these blackest blacks were invented. It's a pretty entertaining read. But I have finally managed to get this entire canvas painted. I'm really glad I didn't go for larger canvases, otherwise we'd be here all day long. I let the canvases fully dry and now let's have a look and see what they're like. First up is Montmartre Lamp Black. It's pretty black, but you can see how shiny it is. I was really surprised I didn't remember it ever having this much sheen. When I hold it away from the light you can see it is quite black though, but because it's reflecting light quite a bit, at certain angles it looks quite pale. And here's the bit I know we're all waiting for. Is black 4.0 going to be any different? Let's flip the canvas and see. Oh yes, there's quite a difference there. You can see it's not perfect though, and that is due to me, I think, having difficulty painting it on nice and evenly. But you can see how much more matte it is, and I'll bring the other one back because side by side the difference is colossal. Just sitting them here with the light shining directly on them, the Montmartre paint is so reflective, whereas the black 4.0 does not reflect at all because it is incredibly matte. I'm very impressed with that, the difference is super noticeable, which is really great. I was looking around my studio to see what else I could use the paint on, and I've got this wooden Lazy Susan that I painted black, but it is also reflecting in the light, it just looks terrible, doesn't it? There's a few paint chips on there, which doesn't help either, but I had painted this with black decorative primer that's meant to be very matte, but it actually has more of a satin sheen to it, and you can really see the light reflecting off it. So I wonder what it's going to be like if I paint half of it with black 4.0. Can we see a difference here? I really hope so, because sometimes I like to display things that I've painted on the Lazy Susan and show it on camera, but because I have bright studio lights, it just really messes with the reflections a lot and it's not always easy to show something. So I have high hopes for this black 4.0 improving the Lazy Susan situation. I was using the same brush, I really should have used a bigger brush, but because the bottle's so small I don't think it would have helped anyway. Once again it was an absolute nightmare to paint on here, it was just drying almost immediately, you could see the brush strokes in the paint and I was just completely unable to get it as smooth and even as I would have liked it to be. I've seen a few demonstrations using much larger bottles than what I have here, and they pour the paint onto things, so rather than brushing it on, pouring the paint instead would probably be a better use of it, because then it would go on a lot more evenly. I think you can actually dilute the paint out with water as well, and maybe I should have tried that with this, but I didn't think of that until much later, like when I'm editing this video. So let me know in the comments if you've had any experience using this paint, and did you enjoy it? I think the biggest downfall of this paint, at least because I'm in Australia, is the price. It's incredibly expensive, and shipping the paint across the world wasn't exactly cheap either. But I'm just finishing up painting half of the Lazy Susan and we'll see what it looks like when it's dry. And yes, it certainly looks darker because it's so matte, but you can see all the shiny bits underneath and that's because I couldn't get the paint on nice and evenly, so some of the primer was still shining through from underneath it. I did try to paint another coat over the top, but it was almost impossible because it just doesn't like having more than one coat applied. But I did end up painting the whole surface and it does look pretty good now, it is a lot more matte. I just wish I had a larger quantity of paint so I could have poured it on rather than brushing it on. But I have one more thing I want to paint, a wooden egg that I found in a charity shop. I thought it would be really fun to paint the entire thing black and just see what it looks like in black 4.0, the blackest black in the universe. So I've just stuck it on a paper bag so I don't get it all over my desk and I'm painting on a fairly thick layer of it. I think in this video I've gone through most of the bottle and I do wish it was a bigger bottle because I had a lot of fun with it, even though it was incredibly frustrating to move it with the paintbrush. But smaller objects are definitely easier to paint than bigger ones. That Lazy Susan was definitely the most difficult thing to paint. The egg was a bit easier, even though it's very awkward to hold it and I had paint all over myself by the end of it. It did wash off my hands very easily though. And the brush was also really easy to clean afterwards, actually more so than with regular acrylic paint. So I'm happy about that. Even while the paint is wet, you could see how black it is. 
And it's definitely the fact that it is so matte that it looks so much blacker because it's just not reflecting any light or very minimal amounts of light. So I guess that's why it is looking really black because it's absorbing all the light and just not reflecting any of it back. So our eye perceives it as very black indeed. Once that side had dried, I painted the other part of the egg. This took me so long to do. It seems like it's really short on camera, but this was filmed in segments over many hours and then I had to cobble it all together. Don't you just love the magic of editing? So I thought I'd finish the last bit of painting off camera and I'll show you the results of the painted egg. It looks awesome! I love this so much, even though there are still a few little flaws in this as well. And I stupidly didn't wear gloves because it picks up fingerprints really easily. Ah oh well, we live and learn. Don't touch the paint with your fingers because it will show up your hand oils very easily. But even with all of my human error included, I do have to conclude that this paint is pretty darn black. And is definitely the blackest paint in my studio. I don't know about the whole universe though, but these are all three things that I painted with it. You could just see how wonderfully matte they are. So even though this paint is kind of a gimmick, it is also pretty effective. And when they haven't got the bright studio lights shining on them, they are even darker again. Here's the Montmartre black canvas included as well, so you can see the big difference there. It's so much shinier under the lights. So if you're looking for a black paint that won't shine, then I would recommend the black 4.0, just as long as you don't mind paying a small fortune for it. I'm very glad I was able to try out a small sample of it. Let me know what you would paint with the blackest paint in the universe. I'm not too sure about that claim, but it is pretty black, so I can't argue too much with it. I do love the egg, that's my favourite thing of the day. I might paint another coat on top at some point. If it'll let me, that is. So thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. You might also want to subscribe to my channel, and I've got a couple of other videos for you to watch now. I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Have a great day and I'll swatch you later. Bye!